sometimes a schedule is a good framework for your daily life and other times you need to shake it up. So take a look at this accordion fold book for just one day in my life. So here it is, it's cute, just three by four. And if I untie the ribbon that is wrapped around it, you can see that this is July 9th, 2020. And we're gonna see everything that I did. So you can see you got up at 4.50 in the morning with the baby and you know, brushing my teeth at 6.51. You know, this is a, talking about when I went for a walk and then I did a podcast. You can see I had a phone call here. I have a little drawing of my sewing machine for when I was working on something. Um, here you can see a picture of an avocado because of what I ate and then a little bit about bedtime along with the end. Now, while it looks like a little book, the secret here is that it is actually a big accordion. So you can actually see all of the pages at once, which is really fun. So it's a great memory. And this is a great little book form that you can make for lots of stuff. I did not put anything on the back, but you certainly could, even if you just wanted to put a basic design on there. So let me show you how we're gonna get started with this. It's pretty easy. I did not have long enough paper to make a really long accordion. So I have to use two pieces of separate paper and you may have the same situation. I'm using a heavier weight paper. This is about 90 pound. And I am going to go ahead and use a scoring tool. Now what this tool does is the metal ridge here creates sort of a bump to make it easier. If you don't have a board like this, you can use a bone folder and a piece of foam for the same effect. But basically, I know that this is four inches tall and I want each page to be three inches wide. So I find the three here and I line up the end and then I take my little tool and you can see the score coming up. Then because this is an accordion and it's going opposite directions, I'm going to flip this over, line the score mark up with the three, just like so to make my next one. And then I'm just gonna continue this process all the way down. And now while my book is three by four, you can certainly make your book any size that works for you. The size is not important. You know, and if you wanted to make, if you had a really long day with tons of stuff, you could put that all in. Now you'll notice this last bit is short. That's fine, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna do the other one and you'll see again just how quickly this goes. And I think one of the reasons to score your paper, people often ask that, like why do I need to do this step? Why can't I just fold it or mark a line? Well, the one thing is I'm lazy. I don't wanna have to draw pencil lines and then erase them. But the other thing is scoring basically means that your paper is not going to crack. And that's really, really important. So that when I fold it, it won't crack. Now, you want to fold it the opposite direction of the bump. So if the bump is coming up, that's how you're gonna fold it. And you can see that very quickly and easily with no effort on my part, I get this fabulous little zigzag. So I'm gonna do the other one the same way, fold, 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 fold. And now the part where they come together. So you might initially think that you're gonna put the two short ones together in order to create a larger page. But actually you wanna do the opposite of that. What you wanna do is you wanna put a short one and nestle it into one of the bigger pieces. However, can you see that this no longer is an accordion? That's kind of a problem, right? We need it so that it zigzags the other way. So you may find that you have to flip things a little bit like this in order for it to create that zigzag shape. So then I'm just gonna use a regular old tape runner. You could also use a wet adhesive, whatever you would like that works for you to cover up my piece and place this in. Now I do find, because I've made the mistake a few times, that it's good to audition your zigzag before you glue it together to make sure that it's going in the right direction. So here's our basic book form. Two additional pieces that I have cut for my front cover and my back cover are just three by four. And once I finish everything, I will glue these on, which will fix this short one here and make it totally long. But we're not gonna worry about that quite yet. We're gonna begin first with the drawing. If you're a little bit nervous, and you might be, and that's totally fine. I think it's fine to go ahead and use a pencil to start. There's no rule that says you have to go you know, directly boldly in. And then if you're thinking about basic shapes, let's talk about drawing. It's not as hard as you think, and you don't need that much detail to communicate. So for instance, a clock. I know it has a circle, and I'm gonna make little alarm bells that are sort of like mouse ears, 
right there. And then maybe I'll give it some feet and some hands. And that's literally all you need to communicate that there's a clock. You know, think of another object from your daily life. What is something? Well, for instance, um, I drew a toothbrush. Well, what is that essentially? It's just a line with some bristles coming out of it. Is this the most realistic toothbrush? No, but I think it looks totally cute. And then I also needed to put my contact lenses in. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw an eye. These are really just little cartoons to help you find your way. Now, I put a lot of text into mine. So one of the things that I did is I took a ruler, which I don't often do, but I wanted the text to be straight. So all I did is I, now this has a grid on it. Can you see that? So I can line the grid up with the sketch lines, with not the sketch lines, with the um, score lines to make sure that I'm straight. And then I can just go ahead and add my line. You can see that first line. And then I can see through the ruler so I can add the next one. And I can see through the ruler and I can add the next one. And I just keep going in this way. And that way I make sure that all of my journaling is really clean and neat. So I have one here where I've added in a different sort of line because I wanna talk about this as another alternative. So instead of drawing in individual lines for each of the journaling, you can see I've just done a sort of big line here. And this is so that I could get the time in nice and big. And then I decided I wouldn't worry and I even could let the journaling circle around or be kind of fun. So the question is, what do you do once you have this basic information? Well, at this point, what I would do is I would take, and I need it to be a black pen that's gonna be waterproof, or any color pen that's gonna be waterproof. To do something like this, basically I'm going to inline and outline it. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna go outside of the four, just like this, and I'm making sure that I'm staying within the lines, okay? And then I'm going to inline the inside of it. And then I'm gonna do these little dots and I'm gonna do the same thing with the five. I'm going to inline and outline it so that it's like the pencil line is sandwiched in the center, just like so. And I'm always making sure that I'm staying just inside those lines, those guidelines that I've drawn. And if your pencil drawing isn't exactly what you want, you can always, always, always make adjustments. And then maybe I wanna make sure that this is AM, just to be clear. And the same thing is true here with the clock. This is my clock face, but let's say it has like a really colorful casing and I want these legs to be included instead of separate. You can see instead of completing the circle, I went around just like so. And then I'm gonna create my little bells on the sides. I don't even know if they sell alarm clocks that look like this anymore, if this is just sort of out of my imagination. I'm gonna connect those, and then I can draw my hands on here wherever I want, just like so. And then I can add my journaling as I want. So you could draw it straight across, just sort of skipping what's happening, or you could even do something fun where you go kind of in a circle around here, just like so. Then once you have your writing done and your pen lines done, I like to take a soft white eraser. There are many kinds of different erasers that you can use, but I found this works the best for getting the pencil out pretty seamlessly. It also helps if you don't press on your pencil too hard so that you can just go ahead and scoop all of this out. Then I'm gonna take my watercolor paints. Now you could also use markers or pens or whatever you're comfortable with. This is really flexible. And I like to mix my colors directly on top of the watercolors. And yes, it contaminates them a little, but I still think it's totally fine. I use my sponge to get a little bit of that paint off there and the water. And that way I can come in and get a very nice soft color. With watercolor, if you want something more intense, you want to layer it. So I can always go back in, get a touch more color, and layer it in, just like so. And if I go a little bit out of the lines, that's great. 
I like that soft look. And in fact, you can do it very purposely. So here's just a wet brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and just blur that line a little bit so that it has sort of a soft and hazy look and it's not quite so perfect looking. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. So let's get those bells a ringing just like this. And I even, of course, want to get in and get to my numbers as well. You know, I think I used to hear this all the time from people that they would say that they thought their lives were boring, that nothing that they did was particularly interesting. And certainly, you know, if you've been quarantined right now for a long time, it may feel that your daily routine is the same. But if you pay attention to a day in your life, if you really keep track of what you do a couple times all day long, you'll be amazed actually at how varied your day is and how many little details and little things you'll want to remember. Because in one year and five years and 10 years, you know, your life could be incredibly different and that's kind of exciting. So if you want another nice fun thing that you can do is you can mix your media. And I love to mix my media. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have a couple different things here. I have some gel pens and I have a brush pen. Now a brush pen is really nice for going ahead and adding a shadow. If you wanna add a shadow like onto your text here. And I'm just adding a really loose shadow around here. You can see that. So you can continue to decorate as much or as little as you want and you'll just finish up your book, put on the covers and you'll be done.